Hello, friends. You know, style, sophistication, elegance, these are things that I appreciate. And Fuji knows this because they've made the brand new, but timeless, XF1. Now Fuji have been going in a very retro direction with their designs like the X10 and the X-Pro1 and now we've got the XF1 which is of course no exception. By far Fuji's most elegant design and I would say on the market right now one of the most stylish bodies that I've seen so far. I do especially like the brown leatherette here with this titanium finish. It's very reminiscent of a titanium M6. It's a beautiful design. In fact, Fuji as of late have been really attacking that Leica market, you know, that really stylish kind of retro feel. You can get this in a black vulcanite as well as a red vulcanite too. So really, really nice designs, clean, clean lines. But the camera is still an X camera, and at the heart of this camera, we have the same fantastic 12 megapixel sensor that you find in the X10 camera. So we're still gonna get beautiful image quality. However, this is also by far the smallest of their new X cameras. And there are some differences, of course, especially when it comes to the lens, and we've got a beautiful 25 to 100 millimeter range, four times zoom, and it's wider than the X10. And of course, it's a lot smaller. And look at this, it's very clever collapsible design. It then brings us into a, a manual zoom and I love that on the X10. I know I'm gonna love it here too. It's just so simple. However, we are only getting a 1.8 to 4.9 aperture range, so we're not gonna get that beautiful wide, wide aperture range throughout like we have on the X10. Still, it could be a really nice trade-off if you want a camera that compact. But the Fuji X-F1 isn't just all about style, it's got some substance too, and actually a very smart design layout. We got a mode dial up on top here. I do like though that it's very sleek and very flush. I don't feel like I'm gonna move it accidentally. And it's, it takes a, a pretty firm push to get it to click, so I like that feature too. We've got a nice control dial here, and again, very simple. Turn it once for aperture, push it in, and turn it again for shutter speed. And it's got a really, really nice aperture shutter display here in manual mode. We can even go to F11, so we get that little bit extra darkness if we need it. But this is the cool part. Other than the standard layout, we've got this E function button. When I push that, it brings up a graphic display of my back keys, and now I can follow these functions for these key presses. For example, I've got the playback button set for ISO, push that there and I can set my ISO right there. And of course, those controls are fully customizable. At first thought, I thought it might be complex to have those things copying two functions, but actually, honestly, it's very straightforward. I've never accidentally pressed anything. It works fantastic. It lets me expand the camera for usability and make it how I want it to be. A very, very smart design while still keeping the camera sleek and clean. We've got a pretty standard MP50 battery here and an AC out port as well. And a very clean system here, just HDMI and then a multifunction USB AV port. Now, if the E function button's not enough for you, you've also got another customizable metal function button on top. Very slick, you can make that ISO or white balance, something like that. We've even got a little pop-up flash. Now this is a pre-production camera that we have from Fuji. We are one of the first here, but uh, let's just see what kind of photos we can get out of this thing. Come on. First, I'm going to take a drink, then I'm going to take a photo. Now, one of the things I really like here, too, this camera's pre-production, but focus, it's pretty precise. And I mean, it can only get faster on a production camera, but I like it as a point and shoot, very, very quick. Let's also try the frame rate here and see what that's, uh, that's like. I mean, not bad, respectable for a camera like this. Again, I would say as good or better than X10. Now ISO on the XF1 is up to 3200 without any other issues and it's a very similar sensor to the X10 so we should get respectable image quality at high ISO. Let's try a shot here. Now the XF1 can actually go higher than 3200 ISO but keep in mind you are going to go down to 6 megapixels if you go to 6400 ISO and at 12800 ISO I'm afraid you're going to be down to 3. You know, this, this XF1, you really got to hold it. You got to get it in your hands. I mean, it really is very elegant. It's very simple. The controls work fantastic. I mean, it's just a really nice camera to use. 
I'm usually worried about a grip like this, but you know, the leatherette, it gives you a, a nice traction there. I don't feel like I'm going to drop it. We got another grippy thingy on the back here. Overall, this camera, the XF1, this is something that's going to give you great image quality. I mean, why would you, why would you go for an X10? Because the X10's got the viewfinder. It's got big chunky dials and controls and that lens with that wide two to two eight aperture range is fantastic. But if you want something more stylish, something definitely more compact, something that'll fit in your pocket of say your smoking jacket and still get that same image quality and really nice manual control, the XF1 is perfect for you. Great, great addition to the X line. Nice colors, very stylish. Have a look out for this very, very soon.